I am a medical educator, I'm an anthropologist, and I am a CMB mommy now, a special needs mom. As a paleontologist, we end up being the faculty that tend to teach gross anatomy to medical and allied health students. And so we interact uh, in a very uh, formal way with, uh, with medical students in their, in their training, and that allows us the opportunity to get involved with the clinical aspects of that same sort of anatomy. So we interact with medical students uh, quite frequently and, and more so in a lot of cases than uh, what you might think of as more traditional clinically trained faculty. My main area of teaching uh, is actually uh, development and embryology. So I present the uh, processes that form typical adult anatomy, but also when those processes are disrupted, what kinds of congenital uh, or birth defects are presented. It occurred to me as an anthropologist that we actually influence the way that these uh, physicians in training then go on to interact with uh, patient and client populations. Our biases and the way that we present information will actually form um, students' impressions of uh, basic science but also of the clinical implications of those um, of that basic science. Part of my research is actually uh, how do we teach medical students about this virus? How do we couch uh, our explanation of this virus to students in a way that generates neutrality towards its clinical sequelae? Uh, and what do medical students and the practicing physicians actually know about uh, congenital cytomegalovirus given that it's not something that is generally formally taught in medical schools? So I teach about congenital cytomegalovirus, which is not a virus that is traditionally covered in a medical school curricula, at least in a formal sense, and which is parsed out from a suite of infections um, for which the test has been developed called the TORCH screen, which incorporates toxoplasmosis, uh, rubella, uh, CMV, and uh, HIV. So that's the T-O-R-C-H in the TORCH screen. And a lot of times in traditional medical school curricula, the TORCH screen is presented, but those separate disease processes uh, that are tested simultaneously but each have various modes of transmission that are different are usually not parsed out from each other. Congenital cytomegalovirus is currently the leading viral cause of um, developmental delays and birth defects in the United States. So approximately one in 150 children that are born every year in the United States are congenitally infected by cytomegalovirus and congenital means that it's a virus that's passed from the mother to the baby in utero and the baby uh, is therefore infected uh, when they are uh, prior to birth. Um, so that equals 40,000 children per year in the U.S. Uh, of those 40,000 children per year that are born with congenital CMV, uh, approximately 10% uh, of babies are, bo are born um, symptomatic so that they present uh, at birth with the symptoms of a congenital CMV infection. And of the 90% of the children who are born congenitally infected, they are born um, asymptomatic, so they present no sequelae at birth, but 10 to 15% of those children will actually go on to develop long-term um, clinical sequelae. The clinical outcomes of a congenital cytomegalovirus infection include microcephaly, uh, vision loss, uh, it's the leading cause uh, non-genetic cause of hearing loss. So up to 30% of hearing loss that's detected after birth is due to a congenital cytomegalovirus infection. So that's a staggering statistic. Um, seizures, uh, motor disability, including uh, various forms of cerebral palsy, uh, and uh, approximately 400 kids per year will die from a congenital cytomegalovirus infection. So I came to learn about CMV not through my uh, formal training and uh, work in medical education, but when my family was affected by the virus, uh, I had been teaching uh, at a medical school embryology for seven years prior to becoming pregnant with my uh, second child, who was a son. And uh, during that time, I was teaching about embryology and had a, uh, an uneventful pregnancy, a textbook pregnancy, some might say. Uh, but when he was born, uh, within 18 hours of birth, he presented with a rash all over his body, uh, jaundice. Uh, his head was small and later was determined to be microcephalic. And within 18 hours of birth, we were um, rushed to the intensive care unit, and several days later, he was diagnosed with a congenital cytomegalovirus infection. 
So I was unaware, despite my training and experience in medical education, uh, of this virus prior to my family being personally affected. I find myself in this position where I am both an advocate uh, of uh, increasing CMV awareness in the community, as well as a researcher about CMV knowledge, and that places me in a unique situation where um, I have the advantage of having access to um, the uh, published literature on uh, CMV statistics, what's going on in the vaccine world, what's going on and what we know about this virus about which we are still learning so much um, and being able to translate that uh, in many cases inaccessible information into something that is digestible and relevant to the public in a way that will engage the public in uh, in engaging in awareness campaigns about this about this virus because of my unique background that allows me to, to bring that to this cause and I um, in a way that um, many families who have been affected by the virus uh, just don't have the background to do so it's my unique contribution to the to the field at the same time uh, I am an advocate because my family has been personally affected and because of that it places me in the situation where our family is on the front line and on public display and they know that my son who has been affected uh, is going to appear in my talks that I have the opportunity to present in because I am a researcher because I have connections to uh, campus life and I can reach uh, students at universities and I know how to reach um, therapists through the organizations that offer early intervention services and I can get access to community health lectures through um, my university and the public health outreach that uh, we do through the university. So I do have this opportunity as a researcher to, ha to have access to these, in these avenues um, but at the same time I have to be willing to lay not only my expertise out but also um, my family's life and my son's experience. And that can be emotional. And it can be, I think, uh, compelling for people who uh, hear our story and hopefully use that to empower themselves towards raising awareness with their own network of uh, friends and family. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.